Um, before we go on, I just want to just recap a bit, right? So okay. the potential storylines that we could have had is T'Challa and Storm getting married. T'Challa and Namor fighting, which is obviously, I mean, even Ra- uh, Ryan Kugler also mentioned that that could have happened and the flooding and whatever. We got p- bits and pieces of that in that movie. That's okay, but it was not depicted the way that we could have anticipated. Just to add on that quickly before you go on, right. Namor and T'Challa have a long history. Like, they've yes. almost gone to war several times, but there's yeah. a time in the comic books where they're actually, like, sort of either respected rivals or friends, uh, almost. Right. And right. that was something that could have also been. But anyway, it's, 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 it's Like you're saying that Namor, Namor has no patience. Namor's solution to every diplomatic situation is we're at war. Yes. <laughs> it, it, but the thing is, T'Challa is field. so good at dip, at diplomacy. Yeah. He knew how to mitigate that. He yeah. knew how right. to give Namor what he wanted without going to war as a result. Yeah. That's how right. shrewd and intelligent of a character T'Challa is. But anyway, sorry, Mr. Extraordinary, you were going? It's okay. Yes. Um, the other thing that we mentioned is there are certain things that the past uh, Black Panthers were doing that he was not willing to do. Um, he was also trying to get which is kind of like a Captain Kirk thing where it's trying to get people from different cultures or different countries to get along and these people don't want to get along which is something that could have been also been utilized in the in the films also uh, having two Black Panthers at the same time and us realizing that Black Panther actually helped his sister well brought his sister back to life and she became another character. So these are like five potential storylines that you could have had should uh, T'Challa been recast. And let's not forget the one, the, also the one where Mbaku is actually a villain. And that's despite, despite even Killmonger, I think we need to get into those characters yeah. as well. The, yeah, yeah. Like, and the best friend also. Because the yeah. best friend... Is like second in command when T'Challa's not around, if I'm not mistaken. So. Yes, Wakabi. Uh, well, the thing is, T'Challa had two best friends. He had two childhood best friends, basically. They retcon to add more, but basically, the two main people it's Taku, who's a gay dude who marries a guy called Horatio Walters, who came in on when Killmonger invaded Wakanda in the comics in the first time. Mm-hmm. So basically, they start a relationship, those two characters, because Taku manages to see that there's something in Horatio that doesn't like violence. Mm. So he basically, they have this genuine conversation where they break it down and all of that stuff. And eventually they actually get married and they live in Wakanda and everything. It was, it was, it was really heartwarming to see. If you want to see more of them, sorry? Yeah, gay rights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Uganda, stop tripping. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, I didn't. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Anyway, but I'm saying those two characters, right? Like T- Taku is one of T'Challa's childhood friends because Wakanda's never had an issue with that. Anyway, right. like that's never like, and this is in the this is in the seventies, by the way. These characters are established in the seventies. Yes, right. His second best friend and second in command and regent when he's not there is Wakabi. That's why a lot of Black Panther purist fans were mad that Wakabi is the guy that joins the the, the villains no. yeah. and helps the villains. And it's just like I what happened is is they saw Mbaku, they saw that his name was Man Ape, and they were like, we cannot call this big black man Man Ape. Which I'm just saying, I don't understand why they had to sacrifice Wakabi to make that happen. Because the other thing yeah. that kind of the other the other thing that's an issue in the MCU is that they started giving everyone else T'Challa storylines. Yeah. Like Nakia's whole "We must open Wakanda." T'Challa, like that's another thing that I don't like about the MCU. T'Challa's never been indecisive. Like they show it yes. pretty well in Civil War, where he's making decisions. But you right. get to Black Panther one. And he's taking suggestions from everybody. Now, again, he's not above taking suggestions. But this whole idea of opening Wakanda, which is something that his ancestors would not do, is something he does in his first week as king. Mm. He literally goes to the UN, invites the UN to Wakanda, has them in a meeting, and then says that you guys need to petition to make sure that we're part of the United Nations by the end of the week. And in this... 
apparently somebody tries to send an assassin to try and kill T'Challa in his first week as king. And he's just like, if you don't let Wakanda be part of the UN soon, I am going to tell the world that you sent an assassin to kill me. So basically the whole, that whole UN scene from Queen Ramonda. It, it, he did it first in the books. <laughs> also, there's a deleted scene in Civil War, right? Oh, that I know what you're talking about. Oh. Where basically, like, you can see that Natasha was trying to interrogate him or trying to get information. And he's like, oh, I have already seen through your tactics. Like, <laughs> is this how you normally get people to give you information? I love that. And I'm like, why did you delete this perfect scene? Like, you know, this is one of the best scenes ever. Yeah, I, think, I, like I, I think he was so OP. He was so OP in Civil War that they didn't want the the attention to go so much to Black Panther, but we forget that it's Steve's story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no other there's no other reasoning, bro. <laughs> I, lo- I love that scene. You're not used to the truth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's it's the no 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 no. I mean, look at how many other characters they also make. They, how many characters steal the spotlight in other movies? I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is how OP Vision was in that horrible X oh, uh, Avengers man. movie. <laughs> I like Vision. Avengers: Age of Ultron. Vision was nerfed. Like Vision was nerfed after. And that. then suddenly he's nothing. He's nothing. Was, uh, it's like we don't no, you want to see somebody steal a movie. You want to see somebody steal a movie. Look at Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange. She took that movie like she was a bully. <laughs> she was. She, I think she was just proving a point when she was talking to Steve and saying, "Just because it's you know from your perspective, you're the hero and I'm the villain. Ah, I'm gonna hijack this whole thing." <laughs> no, no, no. Which she was clearly the villain in that movie. I love that meme where she's like, "All this for a child you met yesterday." And then in the meme, they're like, all this for two kids you never had. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but still, Mama, Mama, she would have killed him. The, the MCU is, is, rushing, is rushing the new Avengers. Am I the only one who feels this way? No, the thing is, like, this is why killing T'Challa is so foolish. Like, another character that T'Challa had an amazing confrontation with in the comments. And again, you can go read this online. It's Black Panther 1990s Christopher Priest. Everybody needs to go read that. Actually, read everything. Read Jungle Action. Read all of it because it's all good. But anyway, except for, and I hate saying this guy's name, John Ridley, do not read his run. Do not read those comic books. John Ridley, don't read them. Because he basically went in there like he's trying to do MCUification and he's oh. nerfing T'Challa and he's he retconning his, history. He entered everything. Suddenly Yo. Wakanda was suddenly Wakanda was had was racist. Suddenly Wakanda had suddenly Wakanda had a coup and kicked uh, T'Challa out and became <laughs> and became quote, quote, quote unquote a democracy. <laughs> suddenly, but I think that's why this is why having a lot of writers in. In a specific IP, it becomes a problem because some writers deliberately just want to undo everything. Deliberately. Yeah. No, the problem is, is that when you get people who don't care about the character, it won't matter. Yeah. Like the thing is with Marvel, they have a notorious thing of getting people who love the character, and then they get somebody who hates the character for no reason I mean, and does whatever they can. Spider Man is prime example of this. They'll get somebody who writes a great story for Spider-Man, and then for the next four volumes, Spider-Man will be broke again. He'll be divorced again. He makes a deal with the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Joe (laughs) Casada did that because he was like, "We can't have Spider-Man age. It cannot happen. If he's married, it will be like he's older." Now I'm thinking about my own mortality. No, Spider-Man must be young, swing and happen, happening. And. I lost my train of thought. I was, I was, I wanted to add to your point about writers coming. Yeah. In. Oh yeah. Well, let's not forget. I mean, who suddenly decided to make Captain America part of Hydra? Oh my goodness, hell Hydra thing. Yeah. Do you see? <laughs> when you're trying, when you're trying to sell comics, you will do whatever it takes. I guess. No, but like this is the thing. Marvel, they do this, and I mean, I think a lot of IPs do this. Star Wars is doing this. Even DC they want to move the something. needle a little bit forward, and then they want to move it right back. Yeah. yeah. And the problem is, is that it's okay to spin your wheel sometimes. That's not the issue. 
it's the way you spin them that's the problem. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's the way that people are trying to, like, they will try to break the, like, I don't know, understand how I many mean, deconstructions T'Challa has had in the I last mean, eight years. And how many times they're trying to modernize Magneto? Because now they're, they're trying to, or they're actively trying to modernize him because they can't have him be a Holocaust survivor. Because each decade that passes, it be, it means Magneto is getting older and older and older, and his biases are let are becoming le- less and less uh, less and less relevant to the coming generation. But it doesn't it, mean it didn't happen. Though. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. happen. And it it always falls to my biggest argument with from all comics, Western comics consumption ever is that you are too afraid to put those two words, the end. Those two words. Mm. Are, are, are living poison to them because mm. it's st- at mm-hmm. some point it stops being a story, it starts being a product to push merchandise. And no, but like the other thing is right with Western comics, we understand that. I I get that. That's not the issue for me. Fine, don't end it, but don't ruin everything that came before. <coughs> don't just torpedo everything to try and reset and start over. Like it's part of the issue with Dragon Ball Super, right? Dragon Ball Z is not a hard thing to write. Dragon Ball Super is not a hard thing to write, but Akira Toriyama and crew basically reset Goku so that he can learn the same lessons that he over. learned in Z over and over and over. And over, over. The, 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 whole, the whole Broly thing, even people are complaining about it. Like, Vegeta was meditating and Goku was like, why are you meditating? What kind of a training is that? Well, like, in Z, this is what you were doing! <laughs> In, this is how you got Super Saiyan 3. This, this exactly. Is, he was meditating in the mountains for three weeks. Well, that's, that's how he masters Super Saiyan. Like, that's how he gets the idea to master Super Saiyan, is he's meditating in the hyperbolic time chamber. Gohan is confused. Goku says, hmm, this form is strong, but yeah, I don't have any of speed in it or whatever. Like That, that was Super Saiyan 2. Super Saiyan 3 is when he was dead. Yes. No, but he I'm he saying he time. meditates in the Cell Saga as well. Like, yeah, this he is does. something that... He meditates in Dragon Ball. What do we? Do? Okay, anyway, we that's another. Anyway. That's another. That's another thing <laughs> that, for another. Day. Uh, look, please, we, somebody reminded me about the whole kissing thing. It's like, re, really, dude. Really. Two kids. Two kids. <laughs> Someone was trying to even tell so, me. I, I, I was I, trying to even tell me that Goku is asexual, and I'm like, he has too many kids to be. No. He has no, too many no, kids. No, no, no. I, I, are you telling me that he assaulted him? That's what you're telling me. Yeah, apparently. Because you're getting to think that that super doesn't exist. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for my yeah, sanity, yeah, for my yeah. sanity, I think we are yeah. imagining this series. If, if, if there's one thing, if, if 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 there's one thing Phil has told me is that at some point you just need to think that this is all fan fiction and you just <laughs> <laughs> like there was no season seven, there was no season seven and eight of, of Game of Thrones. Also, was, like. Even with, with these comics, have you noticed that even hardcore stands consider certain storylines to be canon and others not to be canon? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, yeah. You see this Ridley thing I'm telling you about? Every okay, Black no. Panther fan has decided it doesn't exist. Every Black Panther fan is just like, that was a nightmare. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 the same as the, it's the same as the brown coat Robin. No. Oh, <laughs> oh don't you. When they were calling him Drake. Yar. Nobody Hi. We DC, what no. the hell? Anyway, you know what the uh, problem yeah. is? I think the problem is the people who who what did you call it? The turning the needle or pushing the needle? Oh, hmm. yeah. The ones that did it, like uh, who's this guy? Um, Frank Miller when he did um, uh, what's this? Dark Knight Returns. Yes, the the Dark Knight Returns, but the other one, uh, Batman Year One. Mm. And Dark Knight Returns. He pushed it, but it worked, right? When people like Marv Wolfman, they did the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth and whatever, they worked. Yes. So everybody is trying to outdo those things. No, I don't out. even think that. that I don't mean, even think that. that. I think what happens is, is that writers go in there to beef up their resume to say, I wrote this and yeah. what, 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 what. And then they don't do their research on the characters because the thing is, when uh, thingy, when um, uh, when uh, Frank Miller did what he did, he knew what Batman was about. Right. When Marv Wolfman did what he did, he knew what the DC landscape was about. Right. 
a lot of writers, when they were writing on Black Panther, they knew what Black Panther was about. Sometimes there's little inconsistencies here and there that you can let go, but they knew what that character is. Then other people came in and they had some form of agenda that is, and the thing I like, the thing that I don't like in in comic book writing is, I feel like it's okay to have an agenda, not at the expense of a character. Like you cannot bring yeah. an agenda at the expense of the character. It doesn't make right. sense. It doesn't serve the character. It doesn't serve the audience. And it's a little bit arrogant because you're trying to change something that already predated you. This thing existed before you. Like you are hired to do a that, job. There's someone who's guilty of that. And I know people are going to be pissed by my opinion, but it's still true. Zack Snyder is guilty of this. I Let's agree. Let's hear you out. The Zack Snyder justice... Uh, <laughs> Justice League movie, what, 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 what? In fact, the, no, there, there's a lot of a man carrying his own agenda at the expense of the original content. If you if you pay careful attention to that movie, it's that, Which movie? Lot, the Justice League. Yeah. No, even Batman versus Superman. Something that is infuriating to me, right, is that how would Superman be able to find Lois and not find his mother? That doesn't you make sense. Before. You said that before. He flew across the world. <laughs> that, 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 and remember, Lois is not screaming, by the way. Lois is not crying. Lois is not anything. Like, when he finds her, all she does is this. <sighs> and then he finds her. Zoops. When she's falling off the building, zoops. Why can't you find Martha? Why can't you find Martha Kent? What, what is happening here? And then... Okay, and we'll get we'll get to it. Well, well, gonna... well, I will get to it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm saying there was, meme, there was a meme where there's like an article where it says Zack Snyder originally wanted to make it make it make it as the 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 lady from Thermos, the ladies from Thermos Square were part were part Kryptonian and whatever like that, oh and then goodness. came the came the image of like, some things are just dumb. You know, from the Glass Onion movie, it's like this, some things are just dumb, and I'm thinking, <laughs> and then the like, it's so dumb, it's genius. No. Mm. It's not just genius. dumb. Not genius. But anyway, <laughs> getting back to T'Challa, right? And yeah. like, this is something that I think people are just not grasping, okay, with this character. First off, anybody remember Mephisto? Oh, Mephisto's coming. Mephisto's coming. T'Challa ripped Mephisto's heart out. Oh, flip. Straight Mortal Kombat, put it in a jar, ripped it out. Why? What was happening there? Mephisto wanted the souls of Wakanda and wanted the souls of T'Challa. So he empowered this guy called Achebe. I think that's how we pronounce it. It's A-C-H-E-B-E. My, the way I know African dialects, I guess, is that it's not something where we hide letters. So I know, I, I, in my mind, it's Achebe. Achebe is basically the joker for T'Challa. Okay. So he makes a deal with the devil, right? Achebe makes a deal with the devil. And the legend is, is that he was a farmer that was married to this woman, some freedom fighters or freedom fighters or whatever. They land up on his farm. He takes care of those farmers, uh, of those freedom fighters on his farm. His wife falls in love with one of the revolutionaries. They stab him 18 times, leave him for dead. He makes a deal with the devil. He comes back to life hunts down everybody in his ex-wife's family, hunts down anybody that gave her anything, that sold her anything at a discount, hunts down the rebels and all of their family as well, chases the last guy across the desert to make sure that he's dead, and then blames Wakanda for the regional disturbance and everything, inserts himself in Wakanda, stages a coup and all of that stuff. But... T'Challa figures out something is wrong, and then he figures out that Mephisto is involved. So what he does is he makes himself appear to be vulnerable for Mephisto to attack. He figures out that Mephisto's powers is connected to his realm, and the longer that he's on Earth, if the things are changing around him, like the molecular levels and all of that stuff, then there is a period in time where Mephisto is weak. So T'Challa takes his whole staff, they do this whole ritual and everything. It makes Mephisto weak enough for T'Challa to strike within a five-second window to rip his heart out. That is a better movie than Wakanda Forever. That, 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 
Hey, guys. And My remember goodness. that time where we were all suspecting that it was Mephisto that was going to be the, the main bad guy for uh, for Wonder Vision. Wonder Vision. Or oh, or oh, oh, uh, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Strange. And I okay, I, I may be hijacking. Now they're busy doing like Agatha. The, like why are we getting no, an no, Agatha? No, no, no. Yes. Guys, guys, I, no, 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 no. I don't want to hijack this. This is about to tell, but I just want to say it right here out loud for the whole world to hear. In any given normal circumstance, Doctor Strange has more than a fair chance of kicking Scarlet Witch's ass. Not no, just a, he, no, not even more of a fair chance. He can do it if they actually gave him his powers. Yeah, anyway. yeah. So <laughs> the whole because he's oh basically God, the, so the powerful, Doctor Fate of the Marvel like, Universe. He's the Doctor Fate of the Marvel Universe. No, but it remember, goes back to what you were saying. Yeah, it anyway. goes back to directors, actors. Some writers who don't know anything about these characters are the ones that are given an opportunity to write stuff for these characters. No, I don't blame actors. I don't blame actors because I'm just like, you have to act what's on the script. I'm looking at the writers. Like, a perfect, yes. like sometimes actors you should get involved because, unfortunately, like Kobe Smulders, uh, the person who was playing Maria Hill, I, yeah. if she knew what her character was about, she would never have let them kill that character off in the first right. episode of Secret right. Invasion. Because I'm yeah. just like, you're literally Nick Fury's replacement. You cut your career in yes. half. Yes, why? but that's also why Henry Cavill is pulling out on some projects, because it's like, no, guys, what the hell? I mean, and, and that doesn't make sense to me. I'm just like, the reason you're adapting this material is because the stuff that's in the books got it's already there enough that people wanted to see that Bob in my Why Word would you? Word. <laughs> and that, uh, that's, what I, that's what I said before. It's the easiest job in the world. You just take what it's already established and put it into a script. Look at what anime so is doing, easy. adapting from manga without the filler and just do the same thing. It's so easy, so like, and, easy. Look, and when comic it's... books are convoluted, I get that. But you just need to get somebody who knows how to write, take that stuff, and you can make it work. Now, also, Mephisto is connected to Doctor Doom. T'Challa fought Doctor Doom in this thing called Doom War. Yeah. Now, in Doom War, what happened is, is that Doctor Doom figured out a way to infect the water in Wakanda so he could infect all of the country with nanites. To infect the, he infected the food, sorry, not the water. So, T'Challa figured out that there is this plot happening that's trying to take over Wakanda. So what he does is, and this time he's married to Storm and everything, but what he does is, and he can't even communicate with Storm. He can't tell her what's happening because she's also infected by these nanites. So Doom is spying on the whole of Wakanda. T'Challa figures that out. So what he does is that he always goes out into the forest and he eats off of the fat of the land only because he knows Doom hasn't gotten to that yet. And Doom is worried about, like, where is T'Challa? Where is T'Challa? What is going on? Because Doom obviously wants vibranium as well because yes. vibranium outside of being a technological marvel it also has the powers of mysticism so now what's happening is is that t'challa has figured out that somewhere somehow doom has infected wakanda so he basically has to ditch storm and ditch his mom and ditch his people to go get help to fight doom and he recruits the X-Men, he recruits some Avengers, uh, yeah, some of the Avengers. He recruits the Fantastic Four as well. Mm. And there's this beautiful panel, because basically what he figures out is that Doom figures out how to outthink Reed Richards and T'Challa, because that's, that's how boss Doom is. So T'Challa starts getting radical. So what he does is T'Challa creates a whole new dimension of physics called shadow physics, where he basically figures out how everything is connected on the quantum level and basically figures out how to travel through the quantum realm a la instant transmission. What the hell? Like a la instant transmission Good. style. So I mean, that if... he... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, please continue. If okay. Can, let's yeah. hear him out and then... Yeah, yeah. so yeah. he figures out how to make teleportation on a quantum level so that you can't be detected essentially 
And then he figures out how to connect all of the vibranium in the world and in Wakanda through this shadow physics because Doom is kicking everybody's ass. Like, the vibranium is just enhancing Doom's powers and all of that stuff. And Doom even has this scene with Bost where that's another thing that the MCU, I need yeah. y'all guys to stop it, but we'll talk about Bost in a second. But yeah. Now, T'Challa figures out that I can't beat Doom this way. So what I have to do is I have to destroy all the vibranium. And Doom gives him this speech where he's just like, Wakanda is nothing without vibranium, blah, blah, blah. And T'Challa tells him, honor doesn't come from a thing. It comes from within. Thank you for giving me your armor. It's the perfect conduit to do what is necessary. Then he blows up all of the vibranium in Wakanda and across the planet, leaving it inert. And he basically defeats Doom that way because he figures out how to connect every piece of vibranium on a quantum on a quantum realm and creates this new form of science. So that's how it ends. And what happens to the vibranium then? It's no, fun. so uh, basically what happens is, is that over the years, uh, Wakanda and the scientists and T'Challa and everything, they figure out how to resuscitate it and all of that stuff. And they figure out how to make sure that it's more like, you know, safe from people like um, Thingy, from people like Doom. Amazing. I think the other thing people tend to forget that that is not translated well enough in the MCU is that Vibranium is incredibly powerful. Yes. He would like to think of it, you know, if you look at the MCU, you're just thinking about it, you compare, you'd compare to adamantium, basically. Yeah, that's what you would do, yes. Yeah, yes. A- and while in the it's way comics, stronger. in the comics and in the, even in the, uh, 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 in the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, you see that there is a mystical element to it. I mean, the Dark Elves are weak against iron, but they're also weak against vibranium. Right. Uh, vibranium can hurt um what do you call them? The Asgardians. Mm. That, that, and we are talking about and never mind thing uh Wolverine. Oh, even the question Captain can America's Wolverine's shield. can Wolverine's claws cut through Captain America's shields? Forget that. There are, there are other things about vibranium that people don't realize. They don't. They don't know about, and that's the thing that's solely lacking because everybody is just looking at vibranium as the adamantium counterpart because they couldn't use adamantium in the MCU. Mm-hmm. And I mean, guys, the other types. It was adamantium. There is a vibranium. No, there's as- Antarctic vibranium that can cut through. That becomes anti-metal. That can cut through other metals because it breaks the metals down at a molecular level. Look at that. So, there's so <laughs> many OP metals in, in, in the in, in the Marvel universe. So, Jeez, man, your 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 um. Your knowledge on on Black Panther is truly amazing. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it. I'm either gonna call this video uh, Black Panther Masterclass or Black Panther <laughs> Black Panther dis- uh, Black Panther in depth discussion, something like that. I don't know you which know, one sounds better. That's a genius idea. We actually should do that. Black Panther Masterclass, no? Okay, Black so Panther guys, we gotta get yeah. into we gotta get into T'Challa's lineage now. And now we got to get into the story that the MCU is butchering. So you guys mentioned it up top where T'Challa joined the Illuminati. Now, we have to understand, this is an Illuminati that had Namor. And this is Namor still with the aftermath of flooding Wakanda, right? Right. Right. So what happens in the storyline is that T'Challa is organizing this excursion with a bunch of Wakandan children, and he's basically talking about the Wakandan space program where they're not just going into space, they're going into other dimensions, basically. So they're doing interdimensional travel and all of that stuff, right? Then what T'Challa discovers is that there is this thing called, I think it's called Raboom Alal, something like that. I might be mispronouncing it, but basically it's called the wheel and it's led by this person who's called the black swan. So T'Challa discovers that this lady is wielding a device that can destroy a planet. And the lady in the process kills those Wakandan children that T'Challa was with. And T'Challa, what he does is 
he kills her bodyguards. And the only reason he doesn't kill her is because he needs her to explain why the sky is red, why there was another planet where the moon was supposed to be, and why did you blow it up? Mm. So he takes this woman, and then he calls everyone in the Illuminati. He calls Doc. He calls Reed Richards. He calls Iron Man. He calls Doctor Strange. He calls uh, Beast was um, in the Illuminati at the time because yeah. Professor X was dead, and then um, he and then also he has oh, and a, Black, Bo- Black Bolt, right? Yes, and Black Bolt. Yes, and he also has Namor in like the dungeons of Wakanda. And Namor is teasing him. Namor is saying, oh, I remember when you said that we shouldn't be in the Illuminati. I remember when you said that we should all walk away. Are we foolish now, Mr. King? And all of that stuff. I I would have ripped off his legs again. No, what the uh, thing is, what T'Challa says to him is that you will not talk to anybody besides me. You will not walk around the grounds. Do you understand? And then Namor's still doing that thing of Namor. And then he's like, do you understand? And then Namor's like, okay, I understand. And then the child is like, right now we have to save the world. That right now that's that's the priority. Mm. But you need to know. After that's finished, I'm after my want after my wants replace my needs, I'm going to kill you. Mm. So they all assemble in the council, they all discuss what's happening, and guess what's happening? It's the incursions. That whole thing that they keep throwing around in the MCU, mm-hmm. it's the incursions. And the incursions don't happen in the comics just because somebody was messing with some phenomenal power. No, it's supposedly a natural phenomenon in the universe that's connected to the Beyonders, which is a whole other story. Because we're going to definitely get into that. We have to get into that as well. Mm-hmm. So, T'Challa figures out that there's something going on with the incursions, the Illuminati forms. He's working with Namor simply to protect the world, right? So it comes to a head. It gets to a point. So in between um, Thanos and the Black Order. uh, And all the crazy stuff. Yeah. And And Shuri at this time is queen, right? Shuri is the one that pursues war with Atlantis. Shuri is the one who says, we're not going to do this thing of diplomacy because T'Challa is just like, everybody relax. The only person that needs to die in this scenario is Namor. Namor. You don't need to kill all of these Atlanteans to get back at Namor. And the council and Shuri and everybody says, no, they need a mockery of Wakasa. They need a message. So Shuri sends all of the Hatut Zaraze, which is the dogs of war, and the Dora Milaje and everything. They go in there and they slaughter. I'm I'm talking about they slaughter uh, I, I, Atlantis. I, I, and and that's they the slaughter that, Atlantis underneath the water, by the way. Yes, that's a, one thing I was also hoping that <clears throat> the movie that it wasn't just like, oh, wow, their neighbor attacked Wakanda and, whoa, we just left. I was waiting for a proper counterattack to show that it was a, it's war now. If you're going to show Shuri being emotional and angry and uh, she's taking things to the extreme, then show the, the, the extreme that we're expecting. Show right. that she was also willing to go to that underwater city and do some terrifying damage. It would have even made more sense because you know how people usually deal with grief? Yeah. They take it out on other people. Yeah. So it would have made sense for sure. Well, that's not taking it out. That's just the eye for an eye because Namor came in there and killed the mom and said, you're the queen now and left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying when someone is, when someone lost something, and I think that's also what Namor said when he said that real uh, leaders are made out of great pain or something like that. Only the most broken people can become great leaders. Yes, I'm just saying that. Did I just quote that movie? It still would have made sense if she took out all her anger on. We we definitely going to talk about the movie though. The brother had died. The mom had died. So come on, like yeah, you must stop. And and she went to the ancestral plane and she saw who. (laughs) We'll we'll get to the movie. Uh, I'd have been like, yeah, let's go to war. Yeah, thank you. Send the war dogs. Like drop a nuke in that city. I don't care. Killmonger being the cousin, was it from the comics or is that no, an MCU? That's thing? an MCU thing because in the comics, his origin is that T'Challa's dad dies. 
there's a huge upheaval. T'Challa's dad dies to Claw, by the way. So there's a huge upheaval. Everything is going topsy-turvy. Killmonger gets kidnapped by uh, Wakandan trying to flee all of this mess and everything. They go to America. This guy is abusive. He ends up getting killed. So Killmonger blames the royal family and T'Challa for all of the political upheaval that cost him his family and his peaceful way of life. So he fools T'Challa to get back into Wakanda and then takes full advantage, leads a whole rebellion with zombies, by the way, against the royal throne. And that's his origin in the comics. Just how, just how many rebellions does, does T'Challa have to deal with? Yeah, God, he's been something. It, it's it's quite a few. It's quite a few yeah. in the in the comics. No but wonder, it makes sense because no, no wonder in the end he ends up he ends up becoming a galactic emperor. I mean, he's been <laughs> squashing rebellions left, right, and center like an. <laughs> I'm surprised that he doesn't have gray hairs by now. Oh like, uh, like, like, the, yeah. I think I think after one one or two rebellions, he watched Star Wars and he thought, hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna you know I'm what? gonna be Palpatine out here. <laughs> but the good version. Like, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, because, like, so getting back to that, Shuri leads the attack. Shuri is the one who orders the hit. And there's something in comic books that happens where people, writers, start misremembering events and they start blaming T'Challa for things that are not his fault, yeah. which stop that. Anyway, so, like, what's this? Shuri basically makes the decision, and Waka and, and T'Challa being a team player, he bows to Shuri's decision, and he decides to be the distraction for Namor, so Namor doesn't, is not there to help his people resist Wakanda's attack. So, Namor, in revenge, tells the Black Order that Wakanda has an Infinity Stone. So... The Black Order go the first time and they lose to Wakanda. Then they come the second time and they destroy all of Wakanda. All of it. Like to the point where it's bad. And T'Challa has to make a decision right now whether to stay with his people or to go and save the earth and the universe. Because incursions destroy all of reality. Like that's the thing that they do. It's one of those stories where you can see you know when there's a universal threat, but then people are still caught up in their own in their own ish. Yeah, it's one of those things where it, it's frustrating, but it's also a com- it's a common denominator. It it makes for interesting writing in some cases. I mean, it's it's yeah. They can't, they can't but I'm saying like this, like and and remember, prior to this, right? Prior to this, Wakanda discovers that Namor is in Necropolis. Now, Necropolis is the underground city. Basically, it's the graveyard, and T'Challa is king of the dead. So he's king of this, like, uh, you know, mystical graveyard thing or whatever, which is really cool. So Wakanda discovers that Namor is with T'Challa. T'Challa, and Shuri is there, and T'Challa can't explain what is happening because he's just like, if we tell people that reality is ending, there's a big chance that the whole world is just going to go to shit. Like, there's a big chance where, like, everybody's just going to panic, right? So the Illuminati, in their hubris, which is something that's interesting about those characters specifically, they decide that they can make the best decision for the planet. Yeah. Right? It's, the, it's one of the... It's the big weakness of all the group of super geniuses is that they decide we can... Uh, we need to keep this a secret so that we can keep we can keep the, the, the masses calm. We'll decide what's the best way to solve the world, save the yes. world. So... That is a big conflict between Shuri and T'Challa because Shuri is like, I, why can't you tell me why he's here? Why are you conspiring with this guy? What is it about? But interestingly enough, Shuri still trusts T'Challa enough just to say you are exiled until this is done. Whatever this is, mm. you are exiled. You are not welcome in Wakanda until this is finished. But when things go sideways, the first thing she does is she turns into a little sister and she relies on her brother and she cries in front of him. And then they have a heartfelt goodbye as she makes her last stand against the Black Order because she finally understands that it's reality that's in danger. Right? Yes. It, it it was very heartfelt in the comic books. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So 
T'Challa and them go. And, like, one thing that I did not like about that writing is that the Avengers were trying to act like T'Challa didn't lose his whole kingdom or whatever because yeah. everybody was judging him and his decisions. And it's just like, can you ease up? Like, he just lost his entire kingdom. Can we relax? That's one of the issues that the X-Men have with the Avengers is you guys sometimes don't care about what we're going through, right? Yeah. But you behave as if our actions are not with, within reason. Like some of the things that we're doing, we're doing because we're going through some of these things and you guys were not even there to assist you. You just don't seem to care. Right? The and now you want to butt in. is a mixed bag for me, but uh, yeah. No, now, no. Now, now you guys want to butt in our situations and act like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I get it. I, I understand. Um, yeah. The the it's Avengers, for me, the Avengers are like the Justice League, uh, uh, acting with a Justice League level authority without having Justice League, League level powers. I don't know why they, mm. where they can get off thinking that they can determine where or determine what's right and wrong for everybody, when they don't even have the resources to take care of everybody's problems. It's because of care, I think. Okay. Yeah, but uh, like anyway, this so getting back to the story, they finally figure out how incursions work, right? And they make the move to blow up a planet. So before all of that stuff that I was talking about, in the midst of all of that war planning and everything, the first planet they find is a is a is a barren wasteland, because like the first incursion, they just get to blow up an Earth that's empty, and like they still feel very conflicted about this, very. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very conflicting. So, they do it, right? Now, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I skipped a very important thing. I skipped a very important thing. Um, so, before uh, the Black Order and all of that stuff, right, there's another planet that they find, and this time it's a planet full of heroes. And it's basically technically, uh, you mentioned the Justice League. It's technically like a, a, a Justice League-esque type team okay. or whatever. Oh, I'm yeah. familiar with those guys. With that yeah. Team. No, no, no! It's not. It's not the team that you're thinking of. It's not the. Uh, it's not the high. It's not not Hyperion. What was it? Squadron Supreme. There we go. It's not yes. Squadron Supreme. Oh, okay. Or maybe it's a version of Squadron Supreme. Maybe. But anyway, they're coming from another Earth, right? Mm-hmm. And T'Challa sees a machine, like he, like they're building a machine of scenarios or whatever. Like he built a machine with everybody where they're calculating scenarios, and these superheroes come from this Earth. And that Earth is the next Earth that they're going to be in collision with, right? So, now, T'Challa is hella conflicted because his code of ethics is, I can kill a vile, evil person. I have no problem with that. Mm. But innocent men, women, and children have to be aligned. Mm. So, he goes to the ancestral plane and he goes to speak to the Black Panthers of the past. And he literally tells them what the situation is. And the whole consensus is that, yeah, let it burn. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> and T'Challa is like, what? <laughs> He's like, no, so, you were a king, right? Wait, wait, he, wait, wait. Which, which one came first, the last airbender or, the, or, or that chapter? Because it's, it's giving, uh, it's giving, poor, giving advice to Ang. No, 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 no. It is. It is. No, but I mean, Kiyoshi was talking about saving the world. Yeah. These Panther people are talking about destroying a whole world full of innocent people who have nothing to do with anything, and yeah, their okay. heroes are trying to prevent this situation. Yeah, okay. So, he's like, yeah, they're like, yeah, and T'Challa's like, no, there has to be some sort of line. There has to be some sort of honor here. I can't just yeah. kill innocent men, women, and children. Your line is at your kingdom. Yeah, no, and that's what they say. They're basically like, if it's for the Golden City, let it burn. We're not, we do, you don't, you are king of this Wakanda. You let that place burn. And T'Challa basically like, okay, I guess this is what I have to do. And then before he even leaves, the spirit of his father, T'Chaka, comes back and he's just like, why isn't Namor dead? <laughs> wow. Why is Namor still alive? Right. And T'Challa's like, you dare question me? You, you dare, father. You. <laughs> It's like, I have, 
like I have annulled my marriage. I have killed right. millions of people in the name of Wakanda. I put my I put Wakanda before I mean, myself every time. How dare you question me? Namor lives because I need him right now. When that's over, you will have your body. No, and, and let's put it into context. Co- compared to the other kings, how many? Uh, let's compare uh, to tell us kill count compared to the other kings. Uh, well, I mean, again, T'Challa's got a pretty extensive body count, but like, <laughs> like, like the the other characters, they don't have enough stories where we can uh, accurately put their body uh, count together. Yeah. But we it's assume like, that it's pretty high, yeah, because they've right. been in a lot of wars and they've crushed a lot of rebellions and uh, they've consolidated a lot of power. But uh, how many of them have taken on pl- threats from other dimensions? And no. No, he, he's no T'Challa is the only one of his kind. So that kill count is <laughs> <laughs> for a man who's like indecisive and soft. I mean, he's he, he he's what he counts as a lot. Exactly. Exactly. But that's the interesting part about the character. Anyway, so getting back to it, right? Getting back to it. So we end up getting to um, oh, also they give us like a bit of a backstory where T'Chaka is basically like a king's morality is above everyone else's. It's above these yeah. peasants. It's above all of these people. Like a king's morality is I not. Yeah, it's not this thing like you trying to be a superhero right now. You need to be a sovereign. You need to be a king. Right. And then we get a backstory of where T'Chaka watched a bunch of refugees starve. Because he was like, I can't let them into Wakanda. Because if they come into Wakanda, they're going to ruin our economy. So he closed the gates on them as these people are dying. Hold the the F up. Refugees would ruin the economy of Wakanda. That's what he was saying. How? Aren't they rich? It's so rich in vibranium that they could... But he was saying that we can't just let people in. We can't just bring people's problems here. Because there sounds, were the refugees sounds a billion of them? Yes, T'Chaka was very, T'Chaka yeah. was very, yeah. he was very much xenophobic. This is why T'Challa is such an anomaly to everybody, because they don't understand why he's just letting people in. They don't understand. Okay, I guess he's not racist. He's xenophobic, but he's not racist because he adopted a white kid. Okay. No, but now remember, the white kid, that's what makes T'Chaka interesting. The white kid crashed in a jungle in Wakanda. And the council said that they should let this baby die. But he gets convinced, and I think it's by his first wife, Nyami, something like that, to keep this white kid. Wait, so, first wife? Yes, because he has two wives. So the first wife is Nyami. She dies to childbirth when T'Challa is born. Oh. Yes. And so then Ramonda... not have the same mom. No, so Ramonda comes from South Africa. Basically, she was a freedom fighter in apartheid, and she was looking for some way to fight apartheid with other means. So she traveled, and she ended up in Wakanda, and she found T'Challa. And then, basically, her and T'Chaka fall in love. And that's when T'Chaka gets takes a softer stance, because he was much more kinder when Nyami was alive. And that incident happens after her death. So he becomes more hardened and he becomes more closed off to the world and all of that stuff. Kill kill the refugees. Die, bitch. Yeah. And he basically even has a whole slew of like, you know, women and whatever and all of that stuff. As a king, he tries to drown himself in drink. It was very depressing for him until he met Ramonda. Ah, the power of love. Yes. So... That's the story that T'Chaka tells T'Challa, that you have to put the golden city first. So we get to this point where they fight those guys, and T'Challa's heart is shattering in two. He is trying to negotiate with these heroes to find something out. And basically, Namor is the one that pulls the trigger. And he's basically like, if I must become this thing, let me become it at my own time. So... He basically pulls the trigger. He stabs one of the superheroes in the chest. Everybody starts fighting. It's chaos and pandemonium. T'Challa versus the Batman. Anal, uh, uh, what? Anal, anal, uh, I can't speak. Anomaly. Analogy. <laughs> Analogy. That one. Yeah. That <laughs> one. <laughs> Anomaly. Yeah. He fights the, bat- the Batman analogy. And basically the Batman analogy tells him, 
I'm the least, I'm the last person you want to try this with. I'm the last person you want to give a speech to. I know what you guys are and what you're willing to do to me, I'm willing to do to you. So T'Challa's like, well, I, I guess they will be. <laughs> And then uh, T'Challa's like, I guess there will be death here. That's like, that's kind of the line in the comics. So basically, they defeat those heroes because Doctor Strange whips out a strange power out of his ass or whatever because he's Doctor Strange. And then it comes to the point where they have to use the device that they built to blow up that planet. Wait, so how many parts are there in this comic book? Uh, it's 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 a, I think it's a four it's a four volume what? thing. I think that's all that's information it. in oh, no, four volume. One volume. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole storyline, I think, is about... it's Because it's six volumes leading up to Secret Wars, which is something we also need to talk about. So it's six Wait, volumes leading it, up to Secret is Wars. Is it an Avengers thing, or is it a Black Panther thing? No, no, no. It's an Avengers thing. But basically, all of this lead-up leads to that. And Black Panther has a huge, significant role in Secret Wars, which is amazing. So I have to Secret you, Wars, the 80s version? No, no, no. Or, Secret Wars, the 2015 version. Okay. All yeah, right. yeah. So... Anyway, it comes to when they have to use the device, right? So what happens is, is that everybody says they can't do it. Like everybody's like everybody's crumbling underneath the pressure. So T'Challa grabs the device, right? Mm-hmm. He's literally like, I have to be the one to do it. And all his ancestors, the Black Panthers that he had the conversation with, they come behind him and they're just like, do it, son. Do it for Wakanda. And T'Challa folds. T'Challa starts crying. T'Challa's just like, I can't do this. Like his humanity starts taking over where he's just like, this this is wrong. We we shouldn't have built this device. What were we thinking? And he gets banished from the ancestral plane. So... Namor. He's still the god. He's still okay. No, okay. Let me not. Let me not. So Namor takes the device, presses the button, blows the planet, and everybody <laughs> is 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 horrified. It's Namor, bitch. What to do? They don't like everyone is horrified. Then Namor tells T'Challa that he sent the Black Order to Wakanda. Oh no. Name T'Challa is furious. T'Challa attempts to kill Namor, and he comes pretty close until so everyone else steps in. And then another incursion happens. So it was all for naught. No, so they all decide we can't do this. T'Challa is just like the last thing I'm going to do before my Earth blows up is I'm going to kill Namor. But outside of that, I can't do this. Mm. Everybody says they can't do this. So T'Challa, in the last hours, runs to Storm, tells her that he loves her and that he would have spent the rest of his life with her. And he's like, you know, me being who I am, I thought I would have chosen duty over my heart, but I didn't. So What did Storm say to that? And then everybody waits. Nothing happens. There's no explosion. Everybody panics in the Illuminati. And T'Challa's the first one to say it. He's like, yeah, we better have been wrong. Our calculations have better been off. Otherwise, we kill the planet for nothing. <laughs> yeah, but turns, right? out, turns out, Namor started a cabal and went around blowing up other Earths to keep that reality safe. So... Oh. They all find that out, and they basically find out the last incursion place or something like that. I'm uh, I'm mixing up events a little bit. Yeah. But basically, it turns out that Namor and T'Challa have to team up. So what T'Challa does is T'Challa comes with a knife. And Shuri, he remembers Shuri giving him this knife because he it's the knife that he gave to Shuri on her inauguration. Yeah. And he's like, this is the knives of queens and kings and whatever of Wakanda. It's a ceremonial knife. So she gives it back to him before he leaves to go save the universe. And she's like, please put this where it belongs. So T'Challa grabs the knife and he stabs Namor in the chest. Good boy. 
And Namor's just like, oh, you thought this would be enough to kill me? And then T'Challa's like, no, that's not what's going to kill you. I just put it where it belongs. <laughs> this is what's going to kill you. So he apparently teams up with Black Bolt. Black Bolt blasts uh, Namor onto a platform. And this is the platform with the incursion bomb, right? Because they're going to try and blow this thing up. And this is supposed to be the solution that stops the incursions. Mm-hmm. T'Challa waits for Namor to be conscious. Namor screams, T'Challa presses the button and attempts to blow Namor up. And he, in the dialogue, he says, I know what you're thinking. You're asking me, why am I waiting? Because <laughs> I want him to know. I want him to be conscious. And I want him to know it was me. That, that sounds like a Batman thing, but... Yeah, I get it. But that, but that is Black Panther. Black Panther is the Batman who kills. And yes. Batman wouldn't blow somebody up because he hates him. <laughs> no, no, but the line, the line where Batman is telling Superman in the in the Dark Knight Returns that mm. I wanted to remember that I'm the one who, that did this. <laughs> yeah. And he and he did absolutely nothing because. <laughs> but yeah, so basically. Nemo gets saved again before he gets blown up because they still need that character. But T'Challa attempted to blow him up, right? Then what happens is, is that Doom found out how these incursions work. He found out the source. He goes and gets, I think his name is the Molecule Man and Doctor Strange. And they basically oh, yes, yes. travel to like the end of the universe or something like that. And they basically start secret wars because Doom takes the powers of uh like doom basically gets the powers of the beyonders and he decides to remake, he decides to remake the earth and everything in his own image surprise, right surprise isn't that what he did in the the 80s as well no no he gets the powers but he doesn't win he doesn't get to use them like basically yes. they go back to the beyonder pretty much as much as soon as doom gets them yeah so what happens is, is that Doom remakes, uh, re- remakes reality in his own image and everything. During this time, when they figure out that they can't stop the incursions, because that didn't also stop, the, that bomb didn't stop the incursions either, right? So during this time, T'Challa constructs a life raft to survive the end of everything. So v- Valeria Richards, Reed Richards' uh, daughter, she yes. basically says, you guys can't beat this thing. You need to figure out how to not lose. So, so Reed Richards asks T'Challa to, in, to construct this life raft. And this is something that's showing the intelligence of T'Challa because he creates the design that survives the end of reality. Like everybody that survives that incursion stuff and everything, it's, it's, yeah, what's this? Yeah, it's thanks to T'Challa, basically. 